Thank you once again for joining us here on Pray TV. We know it's getting close to Christmas. We can see it. And there's so much hustle and bustle around this area of Boston where we live. But we know that God wants to be able to give us the right focus during this season. Charlotte's here, and maybe you'll just share a little bit in preparation for our prayer time, dear. Yes, we just are going to be focusing on some scriptures that have to do with the Christmas story and the real reason for Christmas. So we trust that it'll be inspiring for you and that, again, our hearts would be drawn to this beautiful love story, the Christmas story. Yes, we just love the Christmas story, the story of Jesus coming to earth. And our pastor, the lead pastor here at Lion of Judah, had given a message on Sunday past, and it really was a striking message that was talking to us, not about just Jesus uh, coming to earth in the sense of leaving heaven and leaving that part of his divinity, he came to earth, he was God, and he still remained God, but he divested himself of those kinds of supernatural powers and everything that he had on earth was by the means of the Holy Spirit, which is how we are able to function and live. So he proved that he could enter into a human form and human body like we are and be able to live a completely victorious life. And so we're going to look at a portion of scripture here that is very well known, and it's from Luke chapter 1, and it is in the New International Version of the Bible that we're reading, verses 46 through 52. And it says, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been merciful to the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him. From generation to generation, He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. Charlotte, I know this is very special to you, and so I just want you to open up your heart and share with the folk about these scriptures. These verses are commonly called Mary's Song or the Magnificat, and I particularly love this. I, I think of Mary. She was just a teenage girl, a very young, young girl. And to be confronted by the angel Gabriel and told that she was going to bear a son, uh, supernaturally that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would conceive as a virgin, had to be pretty <laughs> mind-boggling to say the least. Um, and yet she said, be it unto me according to your will. There was such a yieldedness and a surrender in this young girl's heart. And this particular song came right as she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was carrying a miracle child too, conceived of course by Zacharias, but because they, Elizabeth was much older, John the Baptist, as who would be the child for them, was a miracle baby too, but as Mary went up to visit Elizabeth and both these women were pregnant, the Bible says that when Elizabeth heard Mary's voice that their child in her, who was John, jumped for joy. Wherever Jesus comes, he brings joy. Mm -hmm. And Mary immediately after um, Elizabeth's greeting to her and Elizabeth's recognition that she was carrying, Mary was carrying the Son of God, Mary sang this song, this beautiful song. And so we just thank God today that this is recorded, that Mary really had an understanding of God lifting up those who humble themselves before Him. Again, this theme of God resisting the arrogant and the proud, it is throughout Scripture. 
God looked for a young woman with a heart towards him, a humble heart who would carry his son miraculously in her own body. And this is really what we are looking for as well. We are just praying that God will prepare each and every one of us to walk in genuine humility. Walking in genuine humility does not mean that we feel downtrodden or we communicate ourselves in some self-deprecating way. It just simply means that we know who we are and we walk intentionally in it, not exaggerating, claims about who we are, nor minimizing who we are. We are to walk in his authority. We're to move in his power and in his strength, but we know that that power and strength comes from him alone. So we are going to read this portion one more time. It is from Luke chapter 1 in the New International Version of the Bible, and it is verses 46 through 52. And it says, and Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in the God, in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things. For me, Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. Charlotte, let's begin our prayer time, dear. Lord, we thank you for this song today, sung from the heart of a young teenage girl who understood things that you only could have taught her and who had hidden your word in her heart. Lord, we thank you that even today you can give us songs in our prayer time. One of the beautiful ways, Lord, that we can pray is to sing unto you. And we pray, God, that that spirit of rejoicing that Mary sang would come upon each and every person who is listening or watching this program, Lord. That, God, we would exalt your name. You are so great, God, and holy, holy is your name. We just exalt you like Mary did today, Lord. And we thank you that you draw close to those, Lord, who draw close to you. And you draw their strength from you as their source. We pray your blessing, God, upon each person who is praying with us today and who will continue, Lord, in their own prayer time with you. And he has done mighty things. We know that Mary said this. And you might say, well, I know that Jesus, when he was on earth, he did mighty things. And we know that the apostles did mighty things. But the reality is that you and I are called to do mighty things in the powerful, matchless name of Jesus. So, Father, we just continue to pray. We continue to lift our voices. We continue to lift our hearts before you. And we say, Lord, you deserve the praise and you deserve the glory and you deserve men and women who will give of ourselves, who will literally pour our souls out in prayer, who will stay before you, who will live in your presence, who will function, Lord, according to your will and purposes. So, Lord, you know that we need you in us to accomplish this. And so we once again invite you, Holy Spirit, we say, Holy Spirit, come. Come, envelop us. Come, fill us with your presence, your power, your praises, Lord. Come, Lord, do what you and you alone are able to do. When you come into your people, you change us. 
You transform us. You make us into new creations, into new creatures, carrying your grace and your glory into the earth. And so, Father, we pray right now, not only for ourselves, but we pray for everyone who is in agreement with us in this very moment of prayer, Lord, that you will give great power and great authority to declare with beautiful clarity. And Lord, we pray with the winsomeness of your Holy Spirit that woos and draws so that we are not being offensive in ourselves. Lord, it's fine if your gospel is offending people, but Lord, we want for ourselves to be gentle and humble in the presentation of your kingdom values. So Lord, send forth your glory this day. Send it into the hearts of men and women. Empower us to do your work, your will, your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you.